by teaching each of these pieces and actually having students look at completed answers and knowing which piece is which, then they're going to have a more black and white understanding when they go to write them themselves. Hey everyone, welcome to the Sierra Harris Teaching Channel. We're going to be talking about some tips and some strategies that will help you break down and teach constructed response. And friends, I have a great freebie for you that you're definitely going to want to stick around for. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Before I give you tip number one, I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page when what the definition is of constructed response. The difference between a normal comprehension question and a constructed or written response question is really the length and the amount of information that they are requiring in the answer. So a typical comprehension question, it, the answer may be, a sentence or two long, especially if you're having them input text evidence. But a written response or a constructed response is more like a writing prompt. So you're having them take information from the text and analyze the prompt to be able to give a more lengthier answer with a lot more text evidence and information. The other thing that constructed responses can do is they can ask for a specific type or genre of writing. They may ask for a friendly letter. They may ask for a persuasive um, essay. They may ask for um, a personal narrative to be written. Um, it really can vary prompt by prompt um, within the text. So there's a lot of different things that you need to make sure you're preparing your students for when it comes to answering constructive responses. How can we break this down for our students? What can we do as teachers to make this a little bit easier concept for them to understand and for us to teach? So I've got three quick tips for you and then I'm going to give you some strategies as well. So tip number one, make sure all of your students understand all of the parts of the perfect written response. So basically what you're doing here is you want to make this as black and white as possible. It's almost like a puzzle piece. They need to know about every piece of the puzzle for them to be able to put it together. So you're going to break down all the requirements that they need. So for example, I've got a little checklist here. Um, you need to make sure that you tell them that it is an expectation to restate the question. It is an expectation that you include two or more details. It is an expectation that you need to use the word because. Um, also down here, we've got, of course, check capitalization and punctuation and reread your answer for a final check. By teaching each of these pieces and actually having students look at completed answers and knowing which piece is which, then they're going to have a more black and white understanding when they go to write them themselves. All right, tip number two is to practice grading constructed response answers. A lot of the times teachers jump right into that writing and we want to make sure our students feel comfortable about what and why they're writing before they write. So this is another tip that I love giving teachers. So it may take a little bit of effort on your end but if you're smart, you type them up, save them, you've got them forever. But you're going to have to come up with some different constructed response prompts as well as answers that are strong, kind of strong, and weak. And then you're going to create a rubric for your students. And you're going to model reading through the given constructed response answers based on the prompt. And you're going to grade them together. What does it look like when I'm grading these? If it were your answer, what would grade would you give it? What is it missing? I have an example rubric here. So I did a three, two, one, very basic scale. Again, you could change yours, but a three for me would be that they restate the question in the answer, that they answer the question using the word because they give two plus details using the story text evidence. And then again, it goes down to two and one, but your rubric is your rubric. You do not have to use mine. Um, and again, it changes grade level to grade level. But this is a great activity to do before you ask them to do any writing. 
Again, it's going to create that more black and white understanding. They're going to see what their expectations are and what they're not. A lot of times we miss or forget to give them the expectations of what we don't want to see. They have a more well-rounded understanding of what constructed response is and how to write them, why to write them, and what the pieces are. Once you do both of these tips, they're going to be able to jump right in and you're going to see lots more motivation and a lot of improvement on their answers. We're ready for tip number three. And tip number three is to make sure that you actually teach a whole lesson on how to analyze a written response prompt. I mean, we're doing no writing here at all. This is, again, prior to them writing, you are teaching them how to analyze the prompt. So you want to go through and have them find what type of writing are they requiring of me? How many details are they actually requiring? Is it one? Is it two? Is it more? Are there specific details that they're asking me to include? Are there specific questions that they are wanting me to write? So you want them to go through and be able to underline, circle, box in, number, whatever strategy you want to um, use, that's completely up to you. But modeling how to read through and analyze the prompts, put them in their own words, and really understand what is being asked of them when it comes to their answers is a must do. I have a great um, anchor chart here that you're going to get tonight that talks about like how you can teach analyzing those prompts. So here you can, um, here I've given a, like a, a fake prompt basically, and you can use this to show students like what can they circle. And over here, they're actually annotating what that means in their own words. That's really important to, to do. That way students can basically repeat the prompt to you, but in their own words. And then down here at the prompt, I actually have rewritten the prompt in my own words. So, so this becomes a lesson in of itself. Can they circle, underline, box, and number, whatever you choose? Can they annotate and can they rewrite the prompt in their own words? That will give them the tools that they need to be able to understand what is expecting of them inside their answer as far as the meat goes. And then they know the pieces to put it in and boom, their confidence increases tremendously when it comes to writing out written response answers. All right, friends. So those are three tips. Don't go anywhere because I've got some strategies for you as well. But tell me below which tip is your favorite. Did you like number one, number two, or number three? Or maybe you liked all of them. I don't know. All right, so I've got three quick strategies that I want you to implement when you are teaching constructed response. Are you ready for these? Number one is a very simple strategy, and I use this really with more of a small group of students who maybe struggle with analyzing constructed response prompts, and it's simple. It's called count it out. Go through the reading prompt, and you are having them number all of the important pieces. So maybe they number the writing format. That's number one. Maybe they number a specific number of details that they need. That would be number two. Maybe they see a specific question that they have to answer. That would be number three. So when they go to write their answer, what they have to do then is write a one, two, and three in their answer. So a number one would be, did I write it in the correct format? Number two would be, do I have that many details that the prompt said? And then a number three would be, did I answer the number three question? They have to actually prove those three numbers in their answer that they correlated in their uh, prompt. This next one is really fun because it involves crayons and talking about Legos. When you're introducing this activity, you want to talk about like when you're building with Legos, what do you do? Does the the structure just automatically appear? No, <clears throat> you take it brick by brick, right? Each piece goes on one at a time and each piece is important and connected to the next. So once you make the connection, then you can start talking about how that also relates to constructed response. So each piece of a constructed response is like a brick in a Lego structure. 
And now what you can do with your students is actually correlate each piece of the written response to a color of a crayon. So for example, you may say that the format of the writing is maybe red. Maybe you have complete sentences or evidence from the text in blue. And then maybe you have their explanation of thinking in green. And so then when they're analyzing their prompt and writing out their answer, they actually have to physically use those colors to write out their answer. So the text evidence has to be blue. The explanation or extension of the evidence has to be green. The answer um, at the very beginning of the prompt or answer has to be red. So you are actually giving them the tools, the colors, the pieces, and making this fun connection to Legos for a quick little strategy and activity to get them to write out constructive response, but in a really fun way. And then this is the last strategy I have for you. Again, this is one of my favorites. It's called find the right evidence. So a lot of times students, the struggle is that they understand the prompt, but maybe they don't know how to go back and find the right evidence that they need. So what you're going to do is before you present the text to your students, before you even make copies, you are going to pre-underline evidence. Some evidence is going to be what they do need. Some is going to be what they don't need. Basically, what you're doing is you're narrowing down the options. So instead of an entire text and there being them being extremely overwhelmed with every option, now what you've done is you've given them a few options. So if they need two details, maybe you've underlined five. So they have to figure out which two do I actually need to answer this prompt? Which two do I need to include in my constructed response answer? So you can have a great discussion about why is this the wrong piece of text evidence? Why does it not really answer the question? Would I use this, you know, maybe as a support piece? Do I even want to use this at all? So you would go through and model the thinking and the analyzing of all the evidence figure out what you do and do not need to use, and then model writing out your constructive response answer. And then, of course, you guide them through it and let them try it on their own. This helps them build the understanding of how to critique evidence, which is something sometimes we forget to teach. We just assume they know how to go back and find an answer. Rather, we need to teach them which answers are better than others, which pieces of text evidence should and should I not use. So finding the right evidence is a great strategy, especially when teaching constructed response, that way they have the tools to be able to analyze the, the evidence and use it in their answer. And then I promised you at the end, I would have an amazing freebie. So you are going to get all the anchor charts that I showed you here. Um, I even have another one that I didn't talk about. Um, you can grab all four of these in color and black and white in the link in the video description. Go and snag those. That way you've got them for your classroom. And if you have any other questions about constructive response or written response that you would like to continue talking about, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to chit chat with you. All right. So I hope today was super helpful. Again, constructed and written responses. Yes, they're difficult to teach. Yes, they're a pain. And yes, students do struggle. But there's so much importance behind them and so much that you can get out of your students from them. So I hope you see the importance of not only teaching them, but the value behind them. All right, friends, I will see you next time. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.